Welcome back to Introduction to Statistics. Today we're going to be talking about the inference about two means, independent samples. We're also going to be talking about what that means. I think the best way to explain what an independent sample is, is to give you an example of a sample that would not be independent. So let's say, for instance, you wanted to test an acne cream, and you would independently and randomly choose individuals to be part of your sample, but then wouldn't it be good to know how their individual chemistry was affected by the acne treatment or not using the acne treatment? So once you chose one side of this poor guy's face to be part of your study, the other side was automatically part of it as the control. They were not independent samples. Okay, so let's talk about what an independent sample is. When the selection of individuals for one sample do not influence the selection for a second sample, the samples are independent. However, when the selection of individuals for one sample determine the selection for a second sample, the samples are dependent. This is also called matched pairs sampling. Another example of this might be if you were to choose one spouse to be in a study, something about marriage dynamics or health of married people, then the spouse would also be in the study. But we are not going to do matched pairs sampling. Instead, we're going to talk about space rats. Or rather, we're going to talk about randomly selected rats who were sent to space and randomly selected rats who remained on Earth. All of the other conditions remain the same. So researchers wanted to know if the red blood cell mass of the two groups was different at a significance level of alpha equals 0 0.05 or 5%. So what else do we know so far? We know that N for the first group equals 14 and N for the second group equals 14. And we can form our hypotheses. Our null hypothesis would be that their blood cell mass doesn't change. So the mean blood cell mass of the first group would equal the mean blood cell mass of the second group. That means our alternative hypothesis would be that they are not the same. Sometimes for this particular type of hypothesis testing, you will see the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis written slightly differently. Because if the two means are equal and you subtract one from the other, you will get zero. So you could write the null hypothesis this way. And you could write the alternative hypothesis that the difference between them does not equal zero. And in fact, even if you write your hypothesis the first way, this is going to become very important when we are writing our test statistic. Looking at the size of those samples, you should be asking, wait a minute, can we even do a hypothesis testing with the, these samples? Well, we don't know yet. So what we're going to have to do is to make a normal probability plot based on the raw data, which I haven't given you here, but I have input the raw data into Minitab and formed the probability plots, so let me show those to you. Here's the probability plot of the red blood cell mass of the space rats in milliliters. As you can see, it's approximately normally distributed. And here is the red blood cell mass of the control group of rats, which is also approximately normally distributed. So yes, we can go ahead and do hypothesis testing. However, we need some more information. We need to know the mean of the first sample, which is 7.881 milliliters. And the mean of the second sample is 8.430 milliliters. The standard deviation of the first sample and the standard deviation of the second sample are the other information that we need. And there they are. Now we can calculate the test statistic. However, since we now have two means, two samples that we are dealing with, 
we need a new formula. Let's make some room for the new formula. That formula being our test statistic. So our test statistic is set up so that we have the difference between the two means of the samples minus the means of the population. Well, wait a minute, we don't know those. We'll get back to that in just a minute. And then the denominator is composed of the square root, the standard deviation of the first sample squared, divided by the number in that sample, plus the standard deviation of the second sample squared, divided by the number in that sample. Now, we don't really have time to go into the derivation of this formula. I'm afraid you'll have to look that up on your own. But I can, we can, make this a little bit easier. And that's why I boxed what I did over here when we were talking about the null hypothesis. We're testing the null hypothesis. As you can see, we have a T sub naught. So if we, if the means of the two samples are equal and we subtract one from the other, we will get zero. That means if we're testing the null hypothesis, this part of it is equal to zero. So we can just put zero in there, zero. So that is a much simpler formula. Or, okay, a little bit simpler. So let's put our values in. The mean of the first sample, the space rats, is 7.881. And the mean of the randomly selected rats left on Earth is 8.430. Those are both in milliliters. We're going to leave the units out for now. And that's going to be divided by the standard deviation of the first sample squared divided by the number in that sample, which is 14, and the standard deviation of the second sample, 1.005 squared divided by 14. And that equals negative 1.43. Seven. That is our test value. Since I believe all of you who answered my poll stated that you prefer the classical approach, and since all of you don't have ready access to Minitab right now, we're going to use the classical approach. Thus, we're using this test statistic. We're going to use the level of significance to find the critical areas. So, we have a level of significance of alpha equals 0 0.05 but this is a two-tailed test. So we're going to have to look at half of alpha. Half of alpha will be on each side of our distribution. So we have this. And degrees of freedom is 13, no matter which number, which sample we use. So referring to our t-table for Alpha divided by 2 being 0 0.025 and degrees of freedom being 13. T for 0 0.025 and with my notation, 13 degrees of freedom. 2.160, because this is a two-tailed test, we're going to consider both the positive and the negative cases. So let's graph this on a T distribution. We are looking at one critical area of 2.160, and on the other side, negative 2.160. And the critical areas are beyond that. Where is our test value now? Our test value is negative 1.4. So we're looking at somewhere in here. This is not in the critical area. Therefore, there is insufficient evidence to say that the means of the populations are different. Let's write that out specifically. There is not sufficient evidence at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance to say that the mean red blood cell mass of the space rats is different than that of the control group. Or we could say there is not sufficient evidence at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance to infer that the mean red blood cell mass of the space rats is different than that of the control group. 
and there we have the source of the title for this video, the inference about two means. Let's take a look at the same problem using the p-value approach, but let's not redo all of the work. Let's take what we can from this and then apply it to p-values. Our calculations are all the same, down to finding the test value. Instead of going on to find a critical region, we're going to go ahead and put this test value on our t-distribution here and give us a, ourselves a picture of what's going on. Now we are looking at the area to the right of positive 1.437 and to the left of negative 1.437, and because everything is mirrored, that is double the value on the right-hand side. And remembering that that area represents a probability and thus a p-value, we can look it up on the chart. So where would we find p equals 1.437? Let's see. Here it is. 13 degrees of freedom and 1.437 would be right in here. Okay, so we're going to look up to the top of the column there for each of those. Our value is going to be right between them. So we have 0 0.10 is greater than our p-value, which is greater than 0 0.05. However, that's just the probability or the area in that half of the tail. So actually, we have the other side to account for, too. We need to multiply each of these by 2 to get 0 0.20 is greater than our p-value which is greater than 0 0.10. But we usually think of this in the opposite direction, right? And I'm going to go to white because it's easier to see here. 0 0.10 is less than our p-value, which is less than 0 0.20. Now, the question is, is our p-value less than our level of significance? Let's see if we can bring that level of significance up here. There it is. Right here. Is our p-value in here less than 0 0.05? Well, no, because 0 0.05 is itself less than 0 0.10, which is even further smaller. Mm, weird way to say that. Anyways, the p-value is obviously greater than our level of significance. Therefore, there is not sufficient evidence at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance to infer that the mean red blood cell mass of the space rats is different than that of the control group. There is one way to express your answer. Make sure you have identified your two groups, in this case the space rats, in the control group. Make sure you have labeled your level of significance and told whether there is or there is not sufficient evidence. And are you looking for whether it's different, less than, or greater than? You must have all of those details in your final answer. All right, let's move on to a more abstract case and get some more practice with this. To perform the inference about two means of independent samples means that you have to have two samples, and you have to know some information about them. So I will tell you that sample 1 has 40 individuals in the sample. It has a mean of 94.2. No units for this. We're going to be very abstract in what we're doing, just following the rules, getting the procedure down. Sample 2 has... 32 individuals in the sample. Its mean is 115.2, and its standard deviation is 23.0. Our goal here is to infer whether or not the mean of the population for sample 1 is less than the mean of the population 
for sample two. Do we have sufficient evidence from what we have here to say that? So our null hypothesis will be no change, that they are exactly the same. Our alternative hypothesis will be what I've written up there, that the mean of the first sample is less than the mean of the second. Oh, and I would like for us to work with this, trying to determine this at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance, the standard level. Now before we move on, we need to find one more number, and that is our degrees of freedom. So to find the degrees of freedom, find the sample with the smallest number of individuals. Here, your degrees of freedom will be one less than that. So let's find our test value. So there we have it. Pause the video, video for a moment and see if you can properly input the different variables. Wow, that's a very low test value. I'm going to guess we have significance here, but let's continue with the method. I'm going to opt for the classical approach. Oh, I refer to my t-table. I start going down the side, the left-hand side, until I find 31. Whoops, there is no 31. I take the number closest to the number for which I'm searching. So I start at row 30, and I go across until I hit the column that has 0 0.05 at its top. And at the intersection of that row and that column, I find 1. 0.697. So that is my critical value. So now I have all of the information I need. Let's draw a t distribution. Let me make some room to do that. My t distributions tend to be a little fatter and not as steep as they should be, but I hope it illustrates the concepts well enough. Now note that we have found a critical value which would put us here but we are doing a left-tailed test, and since everything is mirrored on the other side, we're going to be looking at the critical area being below the critical value, negative 1.697. So where is our test value? Negative 4.3. It is way off our chart. Okay, so is there sufficient evidence? Oh yeah, it's in the critical region. So we will reject our null hypothesis. Let's see how we could say that. So there is sufficient evidence of the alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance to say that the mean of the first population is less than the mean of the second population. All right, so that's our last example for this video. I do want to give you one more bit of information because some of you may be wondering why we can just say that our degrees of freedom equals one less than the smallest sample, the number in the smallest sample. Well, that is a rather rough approximation. However, I can give you the correct formula to use that will give you a more exact uh, reading of your chart and everything. Here it is. So if any of you prefer precision, you can memorize this formula and use it. Otherwise, just subtract one from the number in the smaller sample and use it for your degrees of freedom. I will do one more uh, video for you. I've been promising to do a confidence interval hypothesis test, so look for that video.